<laughs> All right, we are back on episode, what is it? Two of this KK150 arch top in the first episode, and there's a playlist right up there. I'm going to add this video to it. We took what was left of the binding up here and measured it out, showed you how to do all that, cut it, order it, um, fix where um, the head block was coming undone. Got the top of it stable because you cannot have the top and the back unstable, the sides flopping all over the place. That will never work out. So what we're doing this time is we are gonna open the back of this thing up and we are going to get inside because there is some kerfing missing and there's a lot of gluing that we can you do using hide glue and then once this one's done we're going to put the binding back on we're going to have a look at how things fit together the inside of this guitar revealed some secrets about the quality of it that you would have never guessed looking at the outside this isn't just any K, it's one of the top of the line ones from this period of time. So, that said, let's get to the bench. All right, we have everything. We're starting to feel a little bit loose, and we're just going to go along with putty knife. get this raised up just a little bit. Work this back loose. be careful with this part because this is where you'll put a crack in the back you never had before. Sometimes you need heat to do this because when you start getting up on the head block and tail block Sometimes there's quite a bit of glue in there. Everything has been pretty brittle thus far. When it stops, don't fight it. It's trying to cut loose off the head block here. Well, the top stuff is pretty good. There's a couple of issues with the back. All right, we're good to go. Okay, let's take a closer look here. This is plywood, definitely. And that purfling rides just right along the very edge. You see that? And there's a piece here. This is all laminate that's good you can see this is a piece of thin veneer and this is a solid piece of wood here uh, there's a couple parts where the veneer is trying to come off so we'll fix that the kerfing gave up the ghost a long time ago you can see that there was a little gap in there when they shot the paint in at the factory but 
this is really pretty solid again there's just the tiniest ledge right there and it's formed by believe it or not this piece of thin veneer being just a little bit bigger so we're going to be careful with that but the big surprise here is look at this this is the soundboard okay see this i want to see how our camera's doing this is not plywood this is a solid top and it looks to be spruce and the sides look to be mahogany this was a good good guitar so here's the here's the deal this isn't as bad as it looks there are no cracks on the side here and so it's just a matter of getting the kerfing right like so and we're going to glue on new kerfing now i'm looking real close here to make sure that there are no cracks or anything on the purfling that's holding the top now when they put the pickup in right here there's some stuff that got blown out here we're going to fix that up and oh somebody look somebody in the past has put a toothpick in here to try to keep that there's another one right there anyway we'll we'll put uh there's something here to reinforce that but um yeah there's the inside of it do i see any marks from the factory no the the uh the tone bars look to be in good shape there's a little excess glue we're going to go in along here and we're going to touch all of that up and get rid of some of that bleed over but yeah that's nice and solid let's take a look at the back and make sure there's not some factory marks that we missed there i don't see any welcome back to the k k150 when we open this up you saw it the last time we have to put new kerfing in here and the trick to this is the kerfing became the binding channel so if i just go gluing kerfing in here um, as we usually would making this level with the sides that is not going to work so what we're going to do is we're going to leave some of this original kerfing in here and use it to level everything out if you don't the back of it won't be right the binding channel won't be right i'll catch up with you once this is done oh yeah when your celluloid uh gas is off that's what this yellow stuff is here okay guys there's a couple tricks you can use remember this has to be just right the glue is going to creep a little bit especially as you're putting on other clamps but remember the top of this kerfing has to match with the other or the binding channel will not be right you can see i put a piece of tape right here can you see that and then i'm doing the same thing here i'll brush the glue on once i get all of this done i'm going to go with hide glue hot glue good glue luthier's glue and go in and touch up all this stuff and make it solid again there was a repair in the background right here in the past you can see that um, there was some kind of weird plug on here or something but yeah this is kind of what it looks like monitor what's happening with your glue you don't want a bunch of creep going on something really important here is that the 
the way this guitar was designed, again, spruce top, mahogany sides, it doesn't get any better. I didn't know that until we got into it. But the way this was designed, let's pull this off here. As you can tell in the factory that the top of the kerfing was actually used to create a binding channel and the stain or whatever they used to create this artificial sunburst is all over where the old binding was. Now, the way this was constructed was there appeared to be purfling here. You know what? I got to get chick flick teal pointer going on before I get a union grievance but this sits down inside of the um, top of the curving and then this covers up the joint and so that's the way this was constructed so it's really important that when you glue in new curving that it matches the height here because if it doesn't the top sits right on this and it is going to be off kilter and when you go down to glue it on and everything you're going to end up with a crack if this isn't perfect so we're going to end up taking a long piece of sanding block and when we get everything in order we're going to go along and make sure that everything is sanded up like this in fact here's a better one up here we can go across the whole thing and make sure and then we can actually put a level on this we want to make sure that that happens because if it doesn't you're gonna you're gonna have some cracks and you see here this is a little bit high um, and the way this works is this piece of binding be like the same as up here this will hide all of this like this see and just there's that little edge right there it's big enough to get that top in but the top or, or the bottom but it's a little bit shy which is where that purfling which is wood will come in at anyway moving along let me make sure the camera angle is right when we take off all these clothes pins what I'm going to want to do is put I've got hide glue going on here and it's hot see European hide ma violin makers hide glue yeah and so I am going to take a brush and I'm going to take that hide glue and go everywhere that there could be a problem. Like right here, it's a little loose. I might actually take a syringe, the Botox for hide glue syringe, and clamp that down. But we're going to make sure that everything is okay here, that it's level. And we are going to put hide glue another coat everywhere on this thing tone bars tail block head block all the curving it's going to get it's going to get a new dose just in case anything is coming loose so let me get on that now when you're doing this you want to remember anything that's sticking out you're going to get hide glue there but you want to remember that anything that is that gets hide glue on it here where the binding is going to go it's going to create more work for you so just be really careful right here and if you have to reclamp something go ahead and do that if these clothes pins aren't heavy enough for you to do that use something else but make sure that you don't have a bunch of stuff in the binding channel now one of the places you really want to pay attention to if you've glued kerfing already is look at these edges 
very carefully on these curves wherever there's a radius you'll see sometimes that everything doesn't clamp up just right and there's a little bit of an area right here on this radius I'm good I'm seeing a little daylight there so I'm gonna let this leak and remember you've got a syringe if that isn't working well for you and then you just get that channel nice and clean there's nothing like a clean channel okay so we're at a great place right now we have the binding on the top and we got the back off of the k150 you'll remember the last time you saw me we were putting new kerfing in you see that where some of it was missing and we went around to everywhere that there was anything that had been hide glued in the past and we touched that up and rejuvenated that coating oh i want to i want to tell you here this is kind of tore up from the floor up here and we glued some of this down but we are actually going to take some putty and make sure that that's solid because that's where the pickup um is going to sit and also all that gassing off uh, celluloid that was around the pickup surround and around the volume and tone control um, we wiped all that off and got that clean but here is our dilemma we glued this new kerfing in a tad high because you certainly don't want it to be a tad low so there's a couple ways that we can grind this down uh, one of the first things you want to be able to do is go across with something that will reach everywhere so when you run across something like that there you will know it now you can take a flat piece of wood it's best to hold it on its edge because it could have a little wow in it and that won't matter that much as long as this edge or this edge is nice and true and then you can take this stick on 400 grit paper it's got an adhesive backing and you just take your chick flick teal scissors yeah i'll tell you what the nepotism around here it runs rampant but we can oh yeah they're even did you notice what color this is yeah they're everywhere you can't get away from this family of chick flick teal anyway so you can put a coat of this on oak and you can just come around and do this or you can take this mini belt sander got a small belt and you can just go along and do this until everything gets nice and flat All right, now we can just take our straight edge and just go wherever we need to here and make sure that there's nothing hanging up and do that everywhere. And we will put a little putty in here, in this area here, like I said. And one more time, just take a look and make sure um, that by taking a piece of our binding and we can put um, an old piece here we can snap that off and we can just go around everywhere and make sure that, that binding isn't going to be sitting up 
where it doesn't need to be or that it's, that it's hanging up somewhere where there's going to create a gap like right there I got a little bit of a filing job to do there but I'll catch up with you soon because we are actually going to take a little bit of the old kerfing here um, sand this down and make sure that everything is good with this and then we're going to get that purfling off of the edge and we are going to set this down in here and make sure that everything is ready to glue and of course we're going to use our binding as a means of knowing where this goes see that Good Saturday morning. I'm glad you're still laying in bed doing nothing and letting me do all the work. We're back on this KK150. We have flattened out the new binding. We have put a new uh, coat of that is European, E-U-R, I think, hide glue. Don't use that stuff in the brown bottle. Anyway, we have taken everything down and we are going to put the binding on, but we need to establish where the binding channel is it's right here it's not moving but there's a bit of kerfing here and it took a nightmarish hell to get that kerfing remember they built this by putting a piece of plywood over the edge just a little bit I'm gonna set this up we're gonna tape this down we're gonna get everything set up and then we're gonna get our European hide glue don't be using that other stuff and I'll catch up with you yeah, go back to sleep. It's cool. All right, guys. We are at a point where we're pulling the clamps off because the back of this KK150 is already set up. And now it's time to do the purfling and the binding just we, like we did on the front. Now, check these out. These are... H-E-R-D-I-M heard him violin cello clamps out of Germany they're great um, they're also about $15 a piece but at some point if you're working on the right stuff um, it's good they have this little ridge here that rides the edge of let me grab one here a violin you see that it's perfect so when you start working on instruments that are going to matter a lot to you if you see these around um, and you can get them for the right price it never will hurt you but um, again I think at the front end of this video I told you about the Stumac purfling tool. You basically can stack different layers. You might have one collar, a wood piece, another piece, whatever. But you want to make sure those are right so you can just pull this down, put this in here. If you're using modern material, you can use acetone. If you you're if you're using glue and the material is wood and your work time is longer you can just basically run it through that thing and as you pull it through you can use these little office clamps and just be careful that everything is supported and then when it's time to put them you can take a piece of sandpaper between your fingers or one of these things which is really handy by the way they rotate works great for frets and you just run this like so be careful because this stuff will break on you if it's not supported but you don't want anything sticking out pieces of glue or anything like that because when you go 
to put them in that thin by um, purfling channel right there you're going to want to make sure that there's nothing sticking out because if it's on the side that you're applying the adhesive to it will cause it to stick out there will be a gap and that just never goes away um, even when you're waxing the guitar polishing it later anything that's a white color odd color will stick down in that gap and then of course like we did on the top in the first video when we put the binding on you're going to want to make sure that this is stuck well and everything is good before the binding that goes over the top of it is put in place you want to make sure that the thickness of your binding fits with the channel and you can go along and gauge the guitar with a piece of this binding and make sure that there's nothing sticking out that's going to cause a lot of weird stuff and of course you're going to need to prep with a ton of binding tape so i'm going to go ahead and do this you've seen me do this before i will catch up with you at the end all right guys we got the purfling on and glued up and it's sat overnight so now it's time for the binding this is where things are going to start to clip along pretty quick here i have marked the center right there on the inside and we're going to line that mark up with the center of where the body comes together right here now before we start getting all happy with the glue we want to make sure that that kerfing we put in is not sticking out so we take a piece of binding like the size we're going to use and go along and I call this gauging the binding to make sure that there's nothing sticking out that will cause the binding to be pushed out or worse yet that something has sunk in it gives us the opportunity to to take a look at our purfling and make sure that any place where it came together everything is good but what I noticed here is that there is a section of the curfing right here that is sticking out just a tad. So if I were to put the binding in there like so, you can see there's going to be a gap right there. You see it? I don't want that. So again, I'm going to take my couple of tools. You can use one of these fret dressers which is pretty cool it fits right down into the main thing is whatever you're using the stumac file is killer if i was going to buy only one file it would be this one but there are no teeth on the on the sides or on the end so it makes it real good where you can just drop it down in here and not worry about filing this and having it go deeper also with this thing these are cheap and these they have replacement um bands this actually pulls in so you can rotate this also this doesn't have anything on the bottom so if I'm going along I am only sanding where I want and not making the channel deeper but anyway I can see this sticking out just a little bit so I'm just going to push on that I want to hold the file nice and level if I tilt it like this what's going to happen is I'm going to end up with a slant or a bevel or on a block wall or a rock wall they call that a banter the angle it it stacks back against itself I don't want that so I'm gonna go along here and make sure number one that it's not too deep and if there is anything there I can do that but then I can take my binding and do a practice run like so and make sure that everywhere the purfling went the binding was sure to go let me get this done and I'll show you what it looks like in a little bit okay now we're getting close to the radius up here and we're only going to go halfway through the radius and we're going to let that dry up before we do the rest we've done that on both sides because the last thing I want is a gap on the binding right at this radius right here and that is surely what will happen if you try to do it all at once bend that right there and 
beef it up right there and then when we do the rest of the wrap around up here we'll actually put a clamp and a call to pull that in a little bit all right there we go all right guys we have the last little bit to go on this side and we're putting on the bind all remember we always glue up to the edge of the radius but not both sides of the radius because if you do that it's going to bleed through itself or it's going to pull itself out mm -hmm. and you're going to have a gap and you don't want that so there's going to be quite a little bit of touch-up work to do here as you can see when a guitar dries out this badly of course some of the finish is going to come with it if the kerfing doesn't make it the finish might not but we got a couple little tricks up our sleeve it's not going to be anything to write home to grandma about it might be something you want to sit down and have a pickle over oh that'll pop up here in a little bit all right that all come together nice and now we're just gonna wait for all of this to dry all right guys I think this is a good place to end this one because we are going to get in to some binding scraping and finish touch up and all that kind of thing and the end all be all which is to put the neck back on and get that angle set right and I think we'll do that in the final episode the pickup and the electronics are out. We're going to do a little something or other here and here. You know that this thing, at one time, instead of having a quarter inch jack, it was from the time period before that in which they had a screw on basically a microphone cable. So um, that's what went there. Um, we're going to put a couple of things on it to make it easy when we put the tailpiece on for whoever's going to put the pickup in it in the in the controls and everything we're going to make sure that this part is made already and we're going to run grounding wires and whatever we need to do when we put the tailpiece back on but we should be able to send it out of here at least acoustically playable to where it's going so again this has been a great guitar to work on this neck love this neck high end neck got a couple of cracks and stuff we're going to put some hide glue in there but don't forget there's a playlist right up there right about now that has all the episodes of this and once we get to the next piece which is again scrape and binding getting some touch up done here saying it's never going to be perfect but can look a little bit better and then get the neck back on and I will see you then don't forget to subscribe and give me a like if you have not see you soon